We present Visa, a virtual stunt actor, a physics-based animation authoring tool for creating realistic ballistic stunt actions, such as being hit by a car or falling downstairs. This scene showcases our actor performing an extremely challenging stunt, being flung through the air as they collide with multiple vehicles. Attempting this in a real-world setting would be extremely dangerous. By using our system, we can create dynamic stunt actions quickly and easily, utilizing a virtual stunt actor that ensures no one gets hurt. In our system, the creator sets up scenes with actors, buildings, cars, and other extra props, as well as motion trajectory and posture that the stunt actor should follow. Once these elements are defined, our system quickly and automatically generates plausible stunt actions in just a few minutes, while also enabling the creator to edit the scene in an interactive manner. Our system delivers high-quality, flexible, and realistic stunt actions, making it a useful tool for creators. In this example, we create a dynamic 3D scene that resembles a clip from an existing real movie shown on the right. The actors in both the left and right videos perform a scene of falling after being shot by the opponent on the rooftop of a building, bouncing off balconies and window awnings as they descend. This scene we created was not stitched together from separated scenes, but rather created as one long, continuous sequence using multiple cameras and transitions. Our system not only creates similar scenes, but also offers the flexibility to interactively edit the scene, which will be demonstrated later in the video. Here, we will present the process of making a stunt film. We perform real-time editing within the simulator. The indicator on the right displays the current stage of the process being executed by our Visa system. To create a scene, our system follows three simple steps, edit, train, and play. First, we edit the trajectory that the stunt actor will follow during the ballistic action, as well as the default posture the actor will hold throughout the action. Once the editing is complete, Visa trains the controller to ensure that the stunt actor can accurately follow the specified trajectory. After reviewing the results, we can decide whether to finalize the current part and proceed to the next one, or further refine the current part and retrain the controller. Since we are satisfied with the first part, we will now move on to the next one. For the second part, we will continue editing the latter half of the action. We edit the trajectory to match the desired stunt action. At the end of the trajectory, we decide that it would be better for the stunt actor to adopt a more crouched posture. We place a white guide character at the point where the posture will change, and we adjust its orientation and angular velocity. After 10 minutes of training, the stunt actor successfully adopts the crouched posture at the designated position with the correct orientation and angular velocity. Moving on to the third part, the default posture has been changed as it was modified to a crouched posture in the previous part. After training, the stunt actor maintains the default posture while following the specified trajectory. In the final part, the stunt actor falls off the stairs while grabbing onto a step. To achieve this, a posture with one arm raised is added as a constraint, and we adjust its orientation appropriately to ensure it appears natural. Since the angular velocity constraint is unnecessary when the actor is holding onto a step, we disable it. To help the actor grip the step, we connect a spring between the left hand and the step. Now, it looks like the entire scene is created. Let's review the entire sequence. The stunt actor successfully performs the action, satisfying the user-specified constraints, including the trajectory, posture, orientation, and angular velocity. To create a believable animation for this complex stunt environment, it takes only 120 minutes in total, including setting up the simulation environment and the entire authoring process. In our system, task control and pose control are disentangled, which allows users to freely adjust the intermediate poses. This demonstration utilizes three intermediate poses, crouching, a spread eagle pose, and a swinging pose. These poses allowed us to seamlessly achieve a wide range of stunt action styles as shown.
When the controller is not trained, the actor is unable to roll down the stairs and ends up falling. In the early stages of training, the controller prevents the actor from falling down the stairs. As training progresses, the actor increasingly follows the given trajectory. After six minutes of training, the actor successfully completes the trajectory, executing the desired action scene. Our system is evaluated on four topics. We compare our reinforcement learning-based approach with traditional trajectory optimization methods by using a stair scene where the agent follows an S-shaped trajectory. This experiment shows whether the policy trained on the S-shaped trajectory can generalize to other trajectory shapes. For the DRL approach, the policy demonstrates successful adaptation to unseen trajectories, accurately following them despite being trained solely on the original S-shaped trajectory. In contrast, the CMAES policy fails to adapt to the unseen trajectories, stopping prematurely or deviating significantly from the intended path. This experiment highlights that our DRL policy is not only more effective than the CMAES policy in learning, but also exhibits superior adaptability to unseen environments. Our system generates stunt scenes more efficiently and naturally by using perturbation force control compared to joint PD methods, which only generate actions for a PD target pose. Both our system and joint PD without motion prior complete the given trajectory in under five minutes. However, joint PD without motion prior struggles to produce natural motion because it cannot infer the correct poses. On the other hand, our system generates appropriate motion in just five minutes. Joint PD with motion priors also follows the defined trajectory. However, it also produces unnatural motion during this five-minute training. After sufficient training time, joint PD with motion priors is also able to generate more natural motion. However, this requires 100 minutes, 20 times longer than our system. In contrast, our system generates motion quickly and naturally, making it far more suitable for creating dynamic and diverse stunt scenes. This experiment compares various methods for applying perturbation forces to the actor. In the first scene, the actor is struck by a car and propelled into the air. Yellow lines indicate the controlled forces. Our method preserves posture during the collision, whereas root-only method fails, causing unnatural torso folding. In the second scene, the actor's crouching angles are evaluated during stair descent. The graph in the middle shows the crouched angles of ours and root-only. Root only exhibits 20% larger angle variation and excessive bending, indicating poor posture tracking. Contact link only force applies forces proportional to contact forces on specific body links. The graph in the middle shows that contact link only force causes high end effector accelerations due to external forces being concentrated on a few contact links, resulting in abrupt movements like jerking or dragging. Contact link only, VEL, perturbs link velocities similarly to the Many Worlds browsing approach. This leads to frequent dragging and sliding, reducing realism. These evaluations demonstrate that our action space achieves the highest motion quality across multiple aspects. In this experiment, two methods are compared. Our method, which applies perturbation forces adapted to the actor's momentum, and NOADEP, which applies artificial forces freely without adaptation. Our method ensures physical realism by effectively managing perturbation forces, while NOADEP often produces unrealistic floating motions. Additional experiments are conducted with a min-force setting, where a force-minimizing term is added to the reward function. Adding the minimizing force term to no ADAP reduces floating to some extent, but fails to eliminate it entirely. Especially, the generated motion near the shape turn remains very unnatural. For our approach, the inclusion of the minimizing term showed no noticeable improvement in motion quality, but increased training time by 1.8 times. Overall, our momentum adaptation method, without relying on minimizing terms, consistently produces physically realistic motions more efficiently than conventional artificial force methods. Additionally, we present other variations of previously demonstrated examples.